Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Today we're talking about how to prep your guitar for paint. Prep is the very beginning of the process and it's one of the most important parts. If you don't do the prep stage properly, you're probably not going to have a great paint job. So we're going to talk about a few different types of prep situations and what you need to do. So in today's video, we're going to cover a couple of quick scenarios. Um, first is one that I know a lot of you do. It's just a simple repaint and I, I, you know, it doesn't necessarily need to be simple, but what I'm getting at here is you've got a guitar like this one that's already got a finish on it. You know, it's got a nice gloss to it, for example, a lot of them will, um, and you want to refinish it. This one's actually got a big ding in it, but that's neither here nor there. We can deal with that when I go to repaint this guy. So the idea on a repaint is, um, you've already got the wood sealed up. You've already got a finish on there that you're working on top of. And unless you've done several paint jobs on a guitar already, you can work right off of that finish. If you've got like three, four paint jobs on there, fine. Then you probably need to take it off, remove it all the way back. Or if you're trying to restain, then you need to remove it. But my point being with something like this, if you're going to be painting over it, you do not need to do the same amount of work necessarily that you do on some raw woods and stuff like that. So, for scenario one, what do you need to do? Well, obviously you need to, in every case, remove all of the hardware and everything and tape up your cavities, particularly the neck cavity so that you don't have this getting smaller so that the neck can't fit. Um, I generally tape off all of my electronics cavities as well, although it's not a big deal if you're going to be reshielding. Then you need to sand. And for something like this in particular, this is where things get very simple. Again, this is going to act as your primer, as your sealer, and you don't have to do any of those stages. So all you really need to do is scuff this up as you would your ground coat or your primer. In most cases, that's going to mean something like a 400 or 600 grit. If you're going straight to a metallic over top of a finish that's already on there, like if you've got a black background and you're putting on a blue metallic, then you want to use 800 grit. That's it. Do that, clean the surface with wax and grease remover, and you're good to go. Your surface is prepped for paint, then you can move on to your color stages, and later, of course, your clear coat. This isn't going to be a, a video about how to go through the painting process because I've got a lot of those. So just check one of the other ones out. Let's talk about what you're going to do if you've got a kit that's got sealer on it. Just a quick interruption here for a sponsorship message. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I occasionally have videos that are sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform that has tutorial videos a lot like YouTube but with some quality control and some very specific stuff that they specialize in. So not just anybody can make a Skillshare video, uh, and they are generally pretty high quality. In particular, I'm looking at guitar tutorials for myself because I've kind of tried to make a commitment here that I am going to learn how to play the guitar a little bit better so I can do some better demos. And the one that I'm working on right now is right here, Mike Boyd Guitar Fundamentals. Uh, pretty good. I'm going to keep working my way through it. I don't have a lot of time to dedicate to it, but yeah, hopefully I'll be able to play the guitar a little better by the time the next one rolls around. They have tons of stuff on here though. Fine art, uh, video making, business and entrepreneurship, all sorts of stuff that I think a lot of you guys will find useful, including video making for those of you who have gotten into having a YouTube channel or something like that, particularly with the great guitar build off coming to a close here. I know a lot of people have used this as an opportunity to kind of start up a channel and uh, this is a good source for that kind of thing. So we're about to head back into the video and make this fretboard but just before we do one last thing I'll mention the first thousand people that click the link in the description for Skillshare get a one month free membership. So you get one month to kind of try this out and see if you like it. All right let's get back to the video. So a lot of guitar kits such as this one that I'm going to be painting in the next few weeks come with a coat of sealer on them. I don't uh, I don't have a viewfinder on this camera, it's my phone, but uh, you should be able to see a little bit of sheen. That's just one coat of poly sealer. Fairly typical, they do that for shipping. It helps protect the, wo uh, the wood if it's going overseas or something like that. This is an ES-335 kit from Solo Music Gear. Again, I'm going to be painting this one soon. I know a lot of you have been waiting quite a while for this. Sorry, it's, it's happening right away. Um, if anybody wants one of these, uh, the Solo Music Gear link is in the description. It's an affiliate link. Feel free to pick one up and follow along while I build mine. It's going to be happening right away here. I've been saying that for literally like 14 months. But anyway, on in this situation, you're going to have, again, one coat of sealer, not a full seal job, okay? There's still, the, the sealer raises the grain a bit. There's still sealing work to be done. 
So what do you do here? Well, you're gonna sand this first, of course. I like to do that at about 320 grit. If I were doing the raw wood underneath, and we'll cover that after, I'd probably go 220, then the sealer. But yeah, about 320 grit or 400, and then apply another coat of sealer. So your prep work is simply a very careful sanding, 320 or 400 grit. Again, clean it with wax and grease remover. That is something you should be doing for any paint job in essence. Uh, tape off anything that you don't wanna get paint on. So in this case, I would tape the entire fretboard, the binding, right, all the way around. I'd tape my cavities. I probably wouldn't do a whole lot here, but um, you may want to tape your binding if you've got a guitar with binding on it, or you may want to scrape or do a combination of the two. So that's a matter of personal preference. I usually scrape my bindings, but for a double bound guitar like this, I might do a piece of eighth inch tape around the outside and just scrape the top after. That's your prep for this one. Then again, you go on to a sealer for a few more coats after to make sure that your surface is nice and move on to your paint, uh, your color after that. If you are planning on staining this, a little bit of a different set of circumstances for that, I would typically sand a little bit heavier, like 180, 220 grit, finish off with 220 grit before staining, and I'd have to get through all of this sealer. So that's something where you have to be very careful if you're working with, for example, a veneer, because you don't want to sand through the veneer. Also, if I have the opportunity, if I'm dealing with a sealed surface like this, I will use a wipe down with acetone or something like that before I move on because I want to make sure that all of that sealer is out of there and a little bit of a solvent wipe helps with that. I would not do that on this particular guitar though. So really bad example, if I did that on this one, I would probably melt my binding. Don't want to play that game. It would be just sanding for this guy and then a wipe down with wax and grease remover, just like all the others. Now a quick special mention here, if you will, to again, the veneers. If you've got something with a very thin veneer on it, you need to be very careful about how far you sand. If it has sealer on it, which a lot of them do, and you're trying to get through that, all I can really tell you is you have to be careful about it. I like to, in those circumstances, go slightly higher grit than I otherwise would. So if I'm trying to get through the sealer, I'll still use like a 320 grit because I don't want to eat away at the wood too quickly. Um, but it, it's, it's a bit of a tough situation. If you're doing a spalted maple like this, spalted maple doesn't tend to react all that well to stain anyway. So I would suggest 320 or 400 grit, sand the sealer, seal it, and then use a transparent paint on top. Use a, a candy color or something like that as opposed to trying to go for a stain job. If you're doing something like a quilted or flame maple, that's a little bit of a different set of circumstances. You're probably gonna wanna stain those in some cases. A lot of people do. So yeah, you just need to be careful when you go to get through all of that sealer. Try not to sand through on the edges, guys. That's, people do it all the time, but try not to. All right, final scenario, raw wood. You can see we've got a, a couple raw wood options kicking around here. So in circumstances where you're doing a raw wood piece and you want to paint it, it kind of depends on what you're using. In most cases, what you're gonna use is probably a 220 grit and then your sealer, maybe a 320 grit. I often go with a 320 grit because of the types of sealers that I use, but it does matter to a degree what kind of sealer you use. If you're doing like a Simtech polyester sealer, probably a 220. If you're going in there with something like a sanding sealer for a lacquer, I prefer to use a 320 in those cases, sometimes even a 400, but not if I have a 320 kicking around. That's what I'm using. If instead you're going for a stain job, which isn't really within the purview of this video, I mean, it's titled prepping for paint. But anyway, if you're going for a stain job, a lot of people say you shouldn't go higher than a 220 in those circumstances. Personally, I don't necessarily agree with that. It depends on what you're going for. If you want your stain to soak in really deep and you're using literal stain, then 220 is probably your best bet. I like to do dye jobs more than stain jobs. Dye is finer, it soaks in more. And I like to sand a lot finer than that. I will sometimes do a scrape finish or even uh, 800 grit, something like that, 600 grit and dye over that. And it looks different. It doesn't absorb quite as much because the fibers are you know, more aligned. You've, you've made it all smoother, but I prefer the way that those finishes turn out. So that's often how I do that. Then I seal over top of that, of course, and move on to clear coat or oil over top of it or pretty much whatever I want. I mean, there are so many options. Which brings me to one other topic that's maybe a little tangential to what we were talking about, um, oil finishes. Oil finishes, it also depends on what kind of oil you're using when, in terms of what you do for prep you are still going to want to use a wax and grease remover before putting the oil on. 
less so maybe in between. You just want to make sure the surface is clean between coats. Um, some oils you do sand in between coats and some you don't. So there's, there's a lot going on in terms of how to actually do an oil finish that I'm not going to try and cover here. That's not what this video is about. But the prep is one thing that I pr should probably address because prep for oil finishes, in my view, should be a little bit different depending on what kind of oil you're using. If you're using something like a Danish oil or a pure tongue oil or a teak oil, something that's going to soak in a lot, um, I like to sand to about 600 or 800 grit for that. I like to get it really, really smooth for wood. You know, we're not talking 5,000 grit smooth like for polishing, but really smooth in terms of wood and, uh, and go from there. And then I find that the oil will build up a better sheen a little bit quicker there and I don't have to worry so much. It doesn't soak in quite as far when you do that. So there's that to consider. Not everybody will agree with me on that prep. It is to a degree a matter of personal preference. If you're using something a little bit more robust, perhaps something polymerized, like a modified or polymerized tongue oil, or even something like a hard wax oil, an Odie's oil, for example, which is one of my very favorites, um, also available through the Solo Music Gear link. If you're using something like that, you don't need to go quite as high. Uh, in fact, the Odie's oil is often applied with, you know, you can apply it with an abrasive. Um, a lot of those oils you can. So in a lot of those cases, I'll do something more along the lines of a 400 grit, but you can go as high as you want. They will, Odie's oil, for example, will adhere to whatever pretty much. So I've applied tongue oil with 1500 grit paper before. I've applied Odie's oil on top of a gloss finish before. Um, it just depends on the circumstances and what you're using. If you can, have a quick chat with the manufacturer, somebody from the manufacturer who knows what they're talking about because there are a lot of nuances to these and that's the quickest way to learn. Another way to do it is watch a lot of YouTube videos and just experiment a bunch. I've done both of those things. All right, guys, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. It really helps me out. And remember to subscribe so you can see, well, the ES335 paint job project. That Telecaster that I was showing off earlier with the paint job, that one's getting a fresh one. Uh, lots of stuff going on. Thanks again. Hope you liked it. Have a good one. I'll see you next time.